Hello, we welcome you to this Bible study of the Banking Blessings Ministry. My name is Good Luck of Fable, and this is my wife. Of your favor, I'd like to welcome you to today's Bible study. We hope you will be blessed. And today we have my brother visiting with us and joining us in our Bible study. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Edgar Febu. I'm here to welcome everyone that is going to have this Bible study with us. God will bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. And today we will continue our study on the series on the relationship between people and their government. The King and the People series where we try to understand God's purpose for the relationship between different people and their government. Uh, last, in the last Bible study, we looked at an important address that Samuel gave at the inauguration of King Saul, in which he laid down the principle of separation of state and worship. And today we we'll see in this study, we we'll see that that was not idle talk. That was something, a message that God gave to Samuel to give to the people of Israel. And it was in fact a command telling them about the separate, the separation of church, the separation of state and worship. In our last Bible study, we emphasized one aspect of this separation, and that is that um, it's, um, that is people, every individual has the opportunity to set up a direct relationship with God and worship God directly without having to go through their government. Their government is not an intermediary and has no authority to regulate worship. But another important aspect of this is that God set up a hierarchy of leadership for worship. And this hierarchy of leadership is independent of the government. It's not controlled by the government. Government has no authority over it. Government does not regulate it. And government does not monitor what it does. The hierarchy in several countries it is called the clergy. The clergy is independent. The, the, the clergy has authority to conduct worship for the people and to lead the people in direct interaction, in direct worship to interact with God. If a member of government wants to worship, they worship like every other person under, under the leadership of the clergy. The king, the president, the queen, or whoever leads the government has no authority over the clergy. And this is an important point that Paul and uh, that Saul did not record, did not, um, he didn't know or he didn't consider it important because he violated it. And because he violated it, God frowned at him, and in fact, we will see that the punishment is stiff. So, we are going to learn an important lesson from this interaction between uh, Saul, Samuel, and God, and the people of Israel. And the important lesson is that God will provide relief from rulers that disobey his rule that if a ruler disobeys God, God is assuring us that he has his own way to deal with this leader. Of course, that doesn't mean that we all rest on our hands and do nothing. There are things we we'll do, there are things he expects us to do when we know that a ruler is bad. But we are, going to, we are not going to discuss that tonight. We are going to go through several lessons in the future in which we learn these things incrementally. But one of the things, the, one of the, we call it a promise that we get tonight in this particular study is that God will take care of a bad leader. God will deal with a bad leader. It is not 
responsibility of the human being to take laws into his own hands in order to deal with a bad leader. Then the second thing we learn is that the principle of separation of state and worship is very important because that's what Saul violated and it is the violation of that that made God terminate Saul's kingdom. He actually intended that Saul's kingdom will last forever. At least that's what, that's what Samuel told him and we believe Samuel because he, said he was and still is a man of God. He told Saul that his kingdom would have lasted forever but because he disobeyed God's command that God would terminate his kingdom. Saul disobeyed God's command uh, regarding the separation of state and worship. What he did, he actually did it twice. The first time he assumed authority of the priesthood. He assumed that just because he was a king, he could just he could function like a priest. So he forgot an important principle and God punished. Well, God withdrew his king, terminated his kingdom because of that. Well, that wasn't enough for him. Several years later, he had opportunity again and he did it this time even worse because he extended his authority over the priesthood. They did something, he had, well, he accused the priesthood of doing something. Assumed he had the authority to interact, I mean, to investigate whether they did or didn't. Passed judgment over them and executed the judgment. We will see this as we go along. But let us, uh, we're, we're going to get our information from 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 through 15, and chapter 22, verses 6 to 23. Okay, let us start with uh, Saul's usurpation of priesthood authority. And what happened was the people of Israel had gathered at Gilgal to prepare for war against the Philistines. Well, they noticed that they were overmatched. They were afraid. They were terrified of the Philistines. Several of them ran away. And uh, Saul was concerned that the people, that his army was dissipating because they literally were running away, going, some of them crossing over to the other enemy side. Uh, he, he had an arrangement for Samuel to come with in uh, to come, and um, you know I, I guess he wanted Samuel to lead to lead them in offering before they confront the Philistines. After seven days, Samuel did not arrive, and uh, Saul took it upon himself to lead the offering. Remember, Saul is not descendant of a Levite or a priest. He is not of the of that family lineage at all. He was just picked to be king of Israel. He was made king of Israel. He was given authority over state functions. But leading worship or officiating in offering is not a state function. It is a function reserved for priests. Uh, at, this, uh, for, at this particular time, Samuel was going to perform that function. So when Saul didn't have patience to wait for Samuel, he, what he did was he assumed that he could exercise the authority of a priest. It's, it's not the exercising the authority that is the, the key thing here, is that he forgot. Remember at his inauguration, Samuel took time to explain the principle of separation of state and worship. Saul forgot that, therefore he disobeyed God and God dealt with him. Of course, as soon as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived. Then let us read and see what the interaction between Saul and Samuel at Gilgal. From 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, and my brother Fred will read for us. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose 
for himself 3,000 men of Israel. 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and the, in the mountains of Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin. The rest of the people he sent away, every man to his tent. Verse 3. And Jonathan attacked the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it. Then Saul blew the, blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. Verse 4. Now all Israel had it said that Saul had attacked the garrison of the Philistines and that Israel had also become an abomination to the Philistines. And the people were called together to Saul at Gilgal. Verse 5. Then the Philistines gathered together to fight Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and encamped in Midmarsh to the east of Beth Heaven. Verse 6. When the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed, then the people hid, uh, hid in caves, in thickets, and rocks, in holes, and in pits. Verse 7. And some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Verse 8. Then he waited seven days, according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, Bring a bond offering and a peace offering here to me. And he offered the bond offering. He offered the bond offering. So he waited, the, basically he waited for Samuel. He saw that his people were dissipating, were scattering. Samuel had not arrived after seven days and he took it upon himself to lead the offering. Well, uh, well, yeah, he officiated over offering, uh, uh, but what that meant is that he usurped, he assumed that since he was the king, he could do, he had authority to do whatever came up. The function of officiating over the offering was there. Yes, they waited for Samuel, he hadn't come. But he wasn't, he didn't have authority. He assumed, Saul assumed he had authority. Now Samuel arrived later. As soon as Saul finished doing the offering, Samuel arrived. And then Saul went to greet him and Samuel immediately asked him, said, what have you done? And Saul explained that, uh, you know, he waited. We're going to read the details in the Bible. He waited and uh, decided he felt compelled to leave the offering and Samuel rebuked him and uh, if I told him that his kingdom was going to be terminated. But let us read about this from 1 Samuel chapter 13 verses 10 through 14. Only you do the rest of the reading. 1 Samuel chapter 13 verses 10 reading from the New King James Version. Verse 10, now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done, Saul? What have you done? Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Verse 12, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a point of 
he felt compelled and offered a bond offering. And here is what Samuel told him. Uh, Go ahead, yeah. Verse 13. Yeah. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So Saul violated the principle of this is this the, the account is very simple. Saul violated Saul assumed the authority of priest. He was not a priest. He was the king. The king did not have authority to be priest. If the priest wasn't there, they had to wait for the priest. Or they had to wait for somebody that the priest will, will not be there to take care of, you know, will delegate to take care of the function. As a king, as a president, as a queen, as whatever, you don't just get up and go and do unless you are you go through the, 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 the training program and the, the program of being ordained or appointed or you know to be priest and that is a separate program the fact that you are a king doesn't qualify you to be, to be a priest Saul was not a priest he assumed he was a priest God terminated his kingdom because of that he, he was still king but after him, he won't be succeeded. Uh, somebody from his bloodline will not succeed him as the king of Israel. That's what termination of the kingdom means. Well, this wasn't enough for Saul. Um, I, I, you would expect that if somebody does something wrong, gets punished, that he will feel bad for it and repent and you know ask for forgiveness or something like that. But if he did, his actions later on didn't show it. Because he had this interaction, this is when his uh, major, um, when he was beginning to run, to, to, to go after David. David had run, out, run away from Saul's house. Uh, we've done this in the past, we don't want to go back now to it. Uh, David had just run away from Saul's house, went through the city of Nob where he met uh, Ahimelech the priest and Ahimelech prayed for him, gave him some food and gave him a weapon, the, the sword that uh, David won when he, when he killed Goliath. It was stored at Ahimelech's, um, that the house of God that Ahimelech was in charge of. So Ahimelech gave the swords to David and he continued. Well, why this happened, uh, somebody, a mercenary walking under Saul, that was called Doug, the Edomite, was, was there. He witnessed this. And that's where we, we take off because Saul started, when Saul heard that David had run away and then he started blaming his people, all the people walking under him and said, Why are you, what are you people doing for me? You're not telling me anything. What am I paying you for? Why are you here in my house? Then as he was talking to them and scolding them, Doug said, Oh, well, I saw David at the house of Ahimelech. And Ahimelech prayed for him. Let us read about that. Uh, before we read, uh, I want to point out what happened here was Saul accused the priest of Nob of being in a conspiracy with David. And uh, he didn't, well, the, the priest made a case that really should have exonerated him because he said, look, all I did was pray for David the same way that I have prayed for him all along. I know that David was working for you and loyal to you so when he came i prayed for him the same way i've always done i did my job but saul didn't recognize that the interaction between ahimelech and david is an interaction between a priest and a worshiper 
and he, the king, has no role in that interaction. He passed judgment against Ahimelech and destroyed the priesthood of Nob. Let us read that from 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 9 through 16. In 1 Samuel 22, this time we are reading from the New International Version. Verse 9. But Doug, the Edomite, who was standing with Saul's officials, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Ahimelech, son of Ahitub, at Nob. Ahimelech inquired of the Lord for him. He also gave him provisions and the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent for the priest Ahimelech, son of Ahitub, and all the men of his family, who were the priests at Nob, and they all came to the king. Verse 12, Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitub. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and sword, and a sword, and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me, as he does today? Ahimelech answered the king, Who of all your servants is as loyal as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard, and the highly respected in your household? Verse 15. Was that day the first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let not the king accuse your servant of any of his father's or any of his father's family, for your servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair. But the king said, You will surely die, Ahimelech, you and your whole family. Well, so that's, that's what happened. Saul passed judgment over the priesthood. Uh, he didn't have authority to pass judgment. And now he was going to execute the, the, the judgment. Uh, he assumed that his authority extended over the priesthood. And uh, when he gave order for the priests to be massacred, his people told him, the people that, he, you know, his immediate uh, commander, that he gave the order, told him and said, look, we're not going to lift our hands to strike a priest of, of, of the Lord. You cannot, the, and this is what the Bible, the Bible summarizes what happened, but he, they must have told him and said, hey, sir, don't do this. It's not, it's not a good thing for you to do. He ignored them. He turned around and gave an order to his uh, mercenary, Dog the Edomite, and Dog destroyed he killed 85 priests, destroyed the city of Nob, and massacred everything that, they, that, that made them a city. Let us read 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 17 to 19. Hmm. Yeah. That's why I have. Okay, go ahead. 1 Samuel 22 reading from the NIV. Verse 17. Then the king ordered the guards at his side, turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because they have they too have sided with David. They knew he was fleeing, yet they did not tell me. But the king's officials were unwilling to raise their hand to strike the priests of the Lord. The king then ordered the you turn and strike down the priests. So Doug the Edomite turned and struck them down. That day he killed 85 men who wore the linen effort. He also put to the sword Nob, the town of the, the town of the priests, with his men and women, its children and infants, and his cattle, donkeys and sheep. Well, okay, so We've uh, got to be, it's really a short Bible study, but there are basically two things we learned. Well, one is that Saul disobeyed God's commandment regarding separation of state and worship. And because he did that, God terminated his kingdom. Emphasizing to us that government has authority over state affairs, 
but does not have authority over the clergy, nor authority to regulate worship. Government does not have authority over the clergy, does not have authority to regulate worship. And because Saul did this and God uh, dealt with him the way he did, terminated his kingdom, we learn that that uh, I think God is a, it's a word of a word that God is telling us that He will deal with a bad ruler. That he has He is watching, and if a ruler is disobeying His command, if a ruler is going going outside of His uh, His limits, then God will deal with him. Of course, there are things we we. we we may be able to do as individuals, as members of a democracy, to deal with such a leader. But we have to be rest assured that God will deal with him, so we don't have to, we should not be tempted to take the laws into our own hands. Only, this is a lot, so <laughs> you have something to say, and then Eke will say something too about this topic. Yeah, um, as usual, uh, I always say that, you know, the Bible, these things happen so that they can teach us. They are not just stories that we listen. The Bible is a complete um, book. It, 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 so they are, I always look at the life applications of the events that occur in the Bible. And in this situation, one thing comes to my mind, and that is the fact that Saul was king, but he of, he officiated in the office of a priest yeah. by going to make that sacrifice. One could have said, oh, but that's not fair. He was waiting for Samuel and he was compelled because this, this, this. There's no excuse for us to be in disobedience yeah. of God's command. Yeah. There's no excuse for us to be in disobedience. Samuel, he wasn't the only king that actually did priestly things. David did. Gideon and some of the other judges, they mm. did. But God did not instruct those people not to. Yeah. So the fact that he had a clear instruction about this separation, because everything God does is, is carefully planned for, for a purpose. Now, for God to give him instruction, not to do this. There has to, you, you function. Remember when he was being installed? This is the office of the king. This is the office of the priest. It was clearly uh, separated. Yeah. But Saul disobeyed that for whatever reason. You know, we also see an example when, I think it was the same Saul, when he was asked to kill all the inhabitants of a particular city and he spared the Amalekites. The Amalekites and he yeah. spared their king. Yeah. And, and that. We have something on that in the future. Yes. That's that kind of spiraled something else. Yes. So yes. to obey is always better, no matter the reason. You know, we shouldn't begin to function for God and say, ah, but if God knew this, okay, someone was not coming, and the people will do this and do that. God has it in control. Yeah. He has it in control. He gives victory. He does whatever. You don't know what he has done to that your enemy that you are. Saying, oh, my soldiers are, are dissipating. Yeah. I want to just hold them and go to war. That is one. The second thing is, from what we have seen here, God, you know, we, we established one thing at the beginning of this series, that the hand of God is in selecting any ruler. Yeah. And if the hand of God is in selecting any ruler, if he is a bad ruler, he permits it. If the hand of God is not there, that ruler is not going to be there. That is one thing that we know. Now, for us to take matters into our own hands, you know, to say, okay, this, this uh, particular thing is not doing well, or is not doing what we want, let's, you know, overthrow him or whatever. We should be able to know that God will always take care of, sort out any king that is in disobedient yeah. of his plan and purpose for his people or for a nation. God has his way of sorting those things out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think it clearly shows, you know, is portrayed in this uh, story. Yeah. It's not so much as because Saul delved into the matter of pre what 
priest should do. But yeah. the fact that he was in disobedience yes. of what God said he should yeah. do. He disobeyed God's commandment. Mm. And this commandment was carefully laid down for him mm -hmm. at his inauguration. Mm. So he should have. And there is always a consequence. Yes. There's always a consequence. Yes. Well, so <laughs> the you know, whatever God put in your mind, just say that's that's what we do here. Yeah, yeah it's true. Well, so disobeyed God's commandment. But you'll find that uh, not only he disobeyed God's commandment, he allowed fear of his position mm. to take over his the control of the, of, the, of himself or his, or his mind. Yeah. So his fear started when David killed Goliath. And the, the women sang that, oh, Saul has killed his uh, thousands, but David had killed 10,000. From that time, he started to fear that David would be appointed king over him. You know, that what else can they give him but the kingdom? He forgot that it was God who gave him the kingdom. Mm. You see? So we shouldn't allow fear or hatred for another man to take hold of, of us in any position we are. You see, because it is God that gives position, it is God that, uh, that uh, appoints people the way they should be. You know, if, if he had allowed somewhere to come, or he had waited for somewhere, Maybe God will have done a miracle that will make the people who are running away to come yeah. back. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, but he didn't allow fear of the Philistines mm. to take over his mind and he decided to disobey God and go into priesthood uh, worship, yeah. which he shouldn't do. Yeah. So that fear is very, very terrible. And he's still you know, doing, taking part in the life of so many people today. You know, when you listen to all the things they are talking about in politics, is fear. Mm. Fear of position. See? So, Saul so disobeyed God, but it is fear that has taken over his mind, that pushed him. Yes. See, if, 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 in fact, God gave him another opportunity when he sent him to go and kill the Americans. Yeah, yeah. See, God gave him another opportunity, but he failed again. Yeah. Then this priest came also, he failed again. Yeah. So, there are so many things that made God to decide to take him away from the, from the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. but when, they, when something happens to us, we should not take allow fear to make us to make a decision. We should rather submit everything to God, yes. leave everything to God, and let Him take control and do it the way He wants to do it. Yes, that's what people should learn about relationship with God and the position in which they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is really very important, you know, that when God places a person in a position, in a position of leadership or in a position to follow a leader, in a position to accomplish anything, He has really given you a task and what you should do is focus on executing the task. Focus on obeying, following the, the rules that He has given you and working increment by increment through the task that he has given you. Don't start planning how to perpetuate your position. If you are a president, how to be president for life. If you are a king, how to be king for life and pass it to your children and all sorts of things. Because once you start being dominated by those, then you may forget that God placed you in this position for a reason. Mm -hmm. And in this, in this case, that, that Saul succumbs to that. 
because he was so afraid of things that he well first of all i think he assumed he has authority to do whatever he wanted yes he recognized samuel was the priest waited for samuel uh but when samuel didn't come he lost patience and said hey, after all i'm the king let me do it bring me the offering and uh, yeah like, uh, like our brother said yeah. fear you know that's a very important thing fear can make you do all sorts of things yes fear and that is why the bible you know you know, we are told in the Bible, God said He has not given us the spirit of fear, yes. but of courage and sound mind. Mm -hmm. Fear can make you not to hear God. Mm -hmm. it, it clouds your mind. It clouds one's mind that even if God is giving you an instruction, you will not, you are, you are not able to hear it yeah. because fear has taken control of your heart. Yeah. And it, honestly, this is a very timely thing at this point especially looking at different countries in the world where there is crisis based on leadership, you know, and the elections and politics. Rumor mongering, even fear from amongst the people mm. can make them construe things that are not there. Yeah. And then they begin to, you know, do things that can cause problem or yeah. uh, uh, make them lose a lot of things. Yes. It, 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 you know, fear can make somebody wrong when nobody is pursuing them. Yeah. It can make you wrong when, no, when nobody pursues you. You just need somebody to start running because of the fear that is in the heart. Yeah. Because, so this fear is, is both ways. The king, of course, he has been, he knew he had messed up and somebody told him, God has taken the kingdom, terminated it. So he just became afraid and felt that, you know, he could do anything and that fear drove him to make more mistakes fear can only make you make more mistakes so yeah. it's um, i think that's a very very beautiful contribution well okay uh, that concludes our bible study for today we pray that uh, you will thank you for being with us and we pray that you will learn something from our bible study series something that will make a positive impact on your life and bring you closer to God's purpose for your life. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. See you next time. Yeah. Uh -huh.